Day 11 of Rocksmith's 60-day challenge. I am starting to see the Rocksmith Highway. Because I know it's highway. When I close my eyes, this is a good sign. I am starting to connect the visual language of the screen with the musculature in my fingers. I am starting to find retuning more and more annoying. I keep talking about line six variax, which allows you to retune your guitar digitally uh, at a twist of a knob. I hope that the next version of Rocksmith, well, first of all, I hope that there's going to be a next version of Rocksmith. The announcement that Rocksmith is no longer doing downloadable content uh, was really vague. Um, I have vast experience in bullshit speak. And, and press releases, which contain some of the greatest BS ever thrown around. Uh, but that, that one really took the cake. I had no idea what they were saying. New project could mean any number of things. There was implications that it's related to music, but there was nothing... Uh, to say that, hey, just like we went from 2011 Rocksmith to 2014, we paused downloadable content production for a while, then we released 2014. We'll do something similar to that. We'll pause downloadable content production, then, you know, maybe come uh, uh, Christmas season of 2020. We'll get a new version of Rocksmith Evolve uh, out there. And, uh, and, you know, we'll resume downloadable content bit, right? I hope that turns out to be the case. I hope that Ubisoft doesn't move on to doing something else instead of Rocksmith. I mean, they have a bunch of other projects, I know. I hope they continue investing in Rocksmith. If they don't, this is a great opportunity for someone to fill this niche. And I feel that Rocksmith uh, uh, tackled it from a gamer's perspective. But I think this is a tremendously useful tool from a guitar player perspective, uh, from music learning perspective. In any case, um, I hope there is Rocksmith 2020 or Rocksmith Evolve. Uh, and I hope that uh, it resumes downloadable content production. And I hope that it's got something to do with VR. Um, I'm investing in VR and I'm all in on VR. And I hope that Rocksmith also goes in the VR direction if I were making that product, this product. It's what I would do. So day 11. Uh, yesterday was just songs. Um, so let's just quickly review what I learned yesterday.
this song is a lot of fun to play, and so is... Basically, the whole song. <sighs> Anyways, so yesterday uh, uh, I took a lot of joy in ignoring the lessons path and just sort of uh, doing some of the songs that I've learned over the last few, relearned uh, over the last few days, and some of them learned from scratch. Um, and sort of ignore the lesson plan. But today, I, I really would like to get back to the lesson plan. There's three, there's still, um, I think there's about 50 lessons, and we're probably, at, I would say, about halfway through, or maybe 30 way, uh, to 30 lessons uh, into it. Um, so I, um, I want to knock out some of the early lessons, 101s, blow you know blow through those and they get into two 201s and that should be pretty okay by now i think so most of them um and then um get into some 301s and see what that's like okay so what's this here <laughs> dark and 
I can't rely on the source of light to see the fingerboard. It's a little hard to see. And so I missed a few of those. Wonderful performance. But I thought I should practice in the dark. You're ready to apply this to a to practice track now. Here goes. Amazing performance. I blame it all on you, Rocksmith. All right, time for some slides. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Here goes. Flawless performance. You're going to be a superstar.
masterful performance. I have to remind myself to... You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes. I have to remind myself to... Read the visual cues on the screen. Rather than play it from memory. Because, you know, at this point, I'm playing it from memory. Flawless performance. These are good warm ups, but uh, uh, I like them because they get me back into reading the visual language of, of this.
okay, my hand didn't get super tired that time. A little tired. Masterful performance. Uh. Flawless performance. Your turn. That was almost too perfect.
wonderful performance. Play it now. Okay, try playing it now. <laughs> Nicely done.
flawless performance. <clears throat> oh, this one was tricky. Sloppy, sloppy, but I get it. Excellent performance. <laughs> okay, let's move into the chords, all right? Starting to read that uh, those ghost notes that indicate the rhythm and the proper number of swings per beat. Could be better. be better. All right, let's run through this a few times. Let's give it a listen first.
good. Hi, hi. found out that I was overdoing it in that vibrato cool off part. This is 201 after all, so it's just a sloppy little back and forth.
thing I got it now. <clears throat> enough for jazz. Without the aid of the blacksmith, I can play that pretty good. The video gaming uh, playing aspect of this is just not to be underestimated. The learning curve is significant. this is
good enough. And this is the last thing. We cover. Let's see. Remember this. I feel pretty good about this. <clears throat> All right, so we have some 301s and 201s left. Oh, some 102s. As well. Oh, 102s. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. So I don't know how many lessons is this, but it looks like we're. Let's see. Well, judging by the gray bar on the right hand side indicating the scroll bar, that's what it's called. This thing over here, we have uh, a few more pages left, not much at all. all right. Let's see what the course 301 is all about.
Once you learn bar chords, you really open yourself up to a whole lot more harmonic possibilities. Bar is just guitar lingo for fretting notes on more than one string at a time with the same finger. You can bar just two strings. You can use different fingers. I swear to God, I thought bar Or you can bar all six strings at once. I had no idea it was spelled B A R. Let's try it now. Shame it on might me. be a little tricky to get all the notes to sound cleanly at first, but go ahead and give it a shot. Make sure your fingers nice and straight for this. No bent knuckles, and you don't have to press super hard. You just need the right angle on it. Let's bring in your other fingers now so we can make a more familiar sounding chord. This one is based on the E chord shape, but it's moved to the fifth fret, which makes it an A. Here's another one that comes up a lot. Your first finger does pretty much the same thing at the fifth fret. Then using just your third finger, you bar the other three notes. Give it a shot. Ready for the practice track. Here goes. performance do you know why it doesn't matter because I get to do it all over again
Sometimes for double stops, the two notes you want to play aren't right next to each other. Like with this octave. The main trick here is you mute all the extra strings you don't want to hear. As you fret the lower note, use the rest of your finger to lightly cover all the other strings. That way you can strum across all the strings and only hear the two that make up the octave. Give it a shot. That was good. Let's try that octave in a riff now. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Now your turn. Here's a similar idea, but we're going to use sixth instead of octaves. Let's just try that. I think you're on the wrong string there. Nice one. Here's another riff, using those sixths you just played. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Now your turn. Ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Rocksmith really challenges you musically. First of all, they throw in Dragon Force and REM into the same, uh, you know, 55 or 60 songs that come with the game. And, and you know, no record store bin will contain those two uh, 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 bands in the same bin. I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying it's the way it is. And then Rocksmith says, forget that. Because music is music, and I couldn't agree more. I love Dragon Force and Ari. So there. Right? But that's the way it should be anyways, right? So, uh, And I've said this before, I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record. They are not challenging a guitar player any more than they should be at this stage, 201 stage, 301, whatever this is. You're still sort of learning intermediate techniques. But they are challenging the gamer musically. Because this is like, 
a lot of syncopation, offbeat, uh, fusion. They're really challenging you musically, and I really like that. You know, they could have gone the other way. And it seems very intentional. It seems extremely intentional. Anyway, so let's listen to this. Uh, what appears to be a fairly musically challenging uh, piece. Let's listen to it a couple of times.
Rocksmith is starting to do what it's supposed to do. Help me play something before I am able to memorize it. Right? I'm not skipping any other steps. I still have to understand the feel of the composition. I still have to uh, understand the melodic gist of it. And, you know, being able to hum it is certainly desirable, but on, that only happens when you memorize it. Um, what Rocksmith is supposed to do, and it's starting to deliver on this, it's supposed to help me play a section of a song before I'm able to memorize it. If I'm able to do that, then well, that's huge. That changes the whole game. So. to listen to that last part. See right there. Um, I muddled my way through that pretty good. And that's because I was reading the notation on the screen. And so it's day 11, and I think Rocksmith is very clearly starting to give me the glimpse of the possibility that uh, it, this is, in fact, possible. Um, and, you know, of course it is. Uh, it's just it's sort of too good to be true, but uh, I had to sort of see it for myself. And I'm starting to see it, and I'm thoroughly impressed. <laughs>
That ending is very cool. I haven't memorized that part yet, but I'm able to play it.
let's highlight this last part. And we're gonna figure it out. And in fact, might as well slow it down right off the bat.
Okay, so this part. There's a, a repeat complaint that I've heard about Rocksmith that uh, it doesn't show you how to play certain things. You know, pardon me. Yes? I did the wrong Oh, you don't need me? Well, that's too bad. Anyways, where were we? Um, so this section... Oh, no, I forgot. That's it. Um, I I am able to play it not because I am receiving the visual cues from the screen in time to play it. Uh, so earlier, where I said Rocksmith delivers delivered my ability to play that previous part without memorizing. This part, I'm not still quite able to read the tablatures in time, but, and this is where a good teacher comes in, but because of the positioning of the fingers, it's very logically positioned. And it's kind of dumb and boring and long-winded to explain, very simple to show, however, I'm in dark. Right. It's a very comfortable finger positioning exercise. My hand moves from straddling a fourth fret, then to fifth, and then to sixth, and then to seventh. So it's a really nice walkabout. Happy to show it to you if you chance upon this. You can find me on Twitch underscore major. And just ask, I'll be happy to show it to you. Uh, let's now practice this from the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning. I think that's pretty good. Should we do it one more time? Nah. Let's just keep on moving. Slides to a one. Maybe we'll go through like three lessons. So, slides, uh, the one we just Let's did. take a look at some different ways to use slides. Sometimes you'll use a slide more as a special effect than to connect one note to another note. 
Instead of stopping on a particular note, just let the sound die out as you slide down. Now you try it. Sweet. These slides are very flexible and are often used as sort of a punctuation at the beginning or end of a phrase. And they don't always have to go down the neck. Let's try one that goes up and then back down. This is how you get that big kind of wow flourish out of the guitar. You're close. Just make sure you get some of those middle frets to sound out. You're close. Nice. Let's put that into a riff now. to it, then play it. Now let's try sliding on more than just one note at a time. The good news is that if you can play double stops and you can play slides, you've already got everything you need to play double stop slides. Your hand moves like a single note slide, but you finger two strings instead of one, and you just slide both notes. Let's just try that. So, mm. so these are I, E, and B. I have to remember to orient myself. Um, okay, so okay, the string colors are starting to resonate with me. I'm starting to memorize. It's good that high E and low E are of the reddish variety. High E is purple and low E is some kind of burgundy. So they sort of belong to the same family of colors. The fifth string and the second string, the B and the A, respectively, also belong to the same variety of colors. One is yellow, the other one is green. But what they have in common that's even more than that is They are of the neon shade variety. They stand out more than the reds, particularly the subdued burgundy, but also against the purple, neon purple of the high E, the neon green and the neon yellow have a tendency to stand out. And then, the two strings in the middle, middle, the D and the G, the blue and the orange, I suppose. Well, D. Is. Uh, blue. 
and blue is my favorite color. And these my name, don't wear it out. So that should be easy to remember. And then the G string is of the orange-esque variety. Like the Amazon buy button. Sounds like some of the open strings snuck in there. Try to play just the two strings you're fretting. Let's come back to this. Whoa. Here's an in-depth video. All right, let's dig into the slide with a double stop technique. Just start with a double stop. In this case, it just takes one finger, pressing down on a B and high E strings at the seventh fret. As soon as you play that, keep your finger pressed down on both strings and slide up to the ninth fret. When you get to the ninth fret, keep your finger in place so that the double stop keeps ringing out. Try it now. Nicely done. Now, check out this riff that uses the double stop slide. again. Listen to it, then play it. Play it now. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Nice one. Oh, I was taking liberties I was playing it. Now, there's no reason you have to limit this to two notes at a time. You can slide a whole chord up and down the neck if you want to. Let's try sliding a whole bar chord around. Let's try that. You're a little off the mark. Start with a major bar chord built on the fourth fret, then slide it on up to the fifth fret. Some of your notes are wrong. Double check your fingering and try it again. You're a little off the mark. Start with the major bar chord built on the 4th fret, then slide it on up to the 5th fret. Take a second to double check that your fingers are on the right frets, then try again. Some of your notes are wrong. Double check your fingering and try it again. You're a little off the mark. Start with the major bar chord built on the 4th fret, then slide it on up to the Sounds like you haven't gotten it yet. Oh my god. Here's a more <laughs> in-depth look. Why don't we make this chord slide a little closer? Make sure you're starting off with the right chord shape. You're going to play a G-sharp bar chord at the 4th fret. That's the E chord shape moved up 4 frets to make a G-sharp. Keep your hand in that shape as you slide the whole thing up 1 fret, so you'll end up in an A chord at the 5th fret. You want to press down hard enough to get all the notes to sound, but not so hard that your fingers can't move. With too much pressure, your fingers will stick, and it'll be hard to slide, so you'll really have to dial in the right feel on the strings.
You're a little off the mark. Start with a major bar chord built on the fourth <laughs> Here's a riff based on the sliding chords. Here's that riff again. Let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Play it now. Here's that riff again. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. that riff again. Oh. Let's give that another shot. <laughs> Try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's give that another shot. Now let's try that at full speed. Try it again, a little slower. Come on. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. Let's try it again, a little slower. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. That was awesome. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Here goes.
performance. So this is no small feat, right? I don't know this composition at all, but here I am jamming alongside it because I've, over the last 11 days, I've come to understand the visual language of Rocksmith, and it's just been wonderful. Excellent performance. All right, so that's slides. We had double stops. Right. Okay, and so I guess this would make it three. So let's see what this is about. Sometimes when you're strumming, you want to keep the rhythm going without beating the same chord into the oh, ground over me, and over. That's the perfect time for some fret hand mutes. I agree.
Here's a riff that mixes chords and fret hand mutes. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Now your turn. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. <coughs> Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. Let's review this a little further. Here's another video. You're using your fret hand to do the muting here, so your strumming hand doesn't have to do anything different. It just keeps on strumming. To deaden the strings, lay your fingers flat across them. Don't press all the way down, just hold them so they won't vibrate, then strum. You really don't need a lot of pressure to mute the strings this way, and the more fingers you use, the easier it'll be. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Now your turn. Try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. Let's try it again, a little slower. Let's slow that down, then build up your speed. Nice one. These mutes don't always have to go across all the strings. The clicks really sound better on the thinner strings. So let's try that same idea with a three note chord on the three thinnest strings. Just be sure not to let any open strings ring out. Don't tell me what to do. Put out my sword. Just kidding, Rocksmith, you are. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Don't tell me what to do. Now your turn. Let's 
Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's try it again, mm -hmm. a little slower. Mm. Let's slow that down, then build up your speed. Let's try that a little slower, and then build up your speed. Nice. You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Mm -hmm. in performance. I mean, I'll take it. For a first pass. Okay. Well, that'll wrap up day 11. 